Hi, TR back with another RV how-to video, and today, well, it's sort of an RV how-to video. Well, I'm standing here in front of my next project, which is my SNS truck camper rehabilitation. If you're not subscribed, you want to subscribe, ring the notification bell, because there'll be a lot of videos coming on that in the very near future. Plus, I still have quite a few videos to do on the Dutch Star, and we also got his 2022 brand new Jeep Gladiator ready to tow four down. So we installed the Blue Ox faceplate, we installed the Blue Ox uh, tow light setup, and then we installed the Roadmaster Invisibrake. I have the Invisibrake in my Subaru and I love it. It's been perfect. There's nothing to mess with. You install it, you forget it. And that's what we put in Rich's Jeep. So there'll be videos coming on all that as well. But this video, is the owner's manual. So there's some pretty specific things to my RV, some modifications I made over the years uh, to make it better for me. And I needed to share this information with Richard. So I've walked him through it a couple times, but on the second time through, we decided to shoot a video. Uh, so he would have that to refer to. And I thought I'd share that with you. It might be interesting to some of you. This probably generally applies to most new Mars in the early 2000 range as far as the way the systems work and so on and so forth, with the exception of some of the monitoring I put in, perhaps the solar, some of those things. But anyway, I hope you find it interesting. And if you do, give me that thumbs up. He's doing a video on all the equipment on the coach, so you might want to watch this with me. What all the buttons and everything do. The video owner's manual, I'll post this on my YouTube channel and you guys can go watch it anytime something comes up. Thank you. Right. All right, so anyway, um, the video owner's manual for this 2004 Newmar Dutch Star. We're going to start back here with the electrical. And you have two breaker panels. Okay. The shore power is the power you have when you're plugged into a pedestal. Okay. So like where you're plugged in outside right now, all that power is coming through here. Then there's this panel, which is the inverter panel. And so what the inverter is, is that it takes the 12 volt batteries that are sitting here, converts that to 110. It makes it available when you're not plugged in okay so anyway that's these two breaker panels um, this is the 12 volt fuse location and it's well marked so each of the fuses is marked as to what it what it goes to okay so there might be like the vent fan vent up front um, you know if I go in here and read closer there's uh, like the bathroom vent so there's it's gonna be on its own so for some reason you turn it on, it's not working, then you want to check the fuse, right? And I showed you how to do the quick check with the meter, right? So this is all the 12 volt that's inside the coach. This is obviously our slide operator, right? Push it once to bring the slide in. If for some reason you need to stop it real fast, say you got something under the front or something, you know, is wound up, hit it again, and that'll stop it. And it's... I'll show you. So you start it, see how it'll stop, and now when you hit it again, it's going to go back out. All right, okay, courtesy lights, those are the lights down here in the floor, right, those that run through the coach. This is the overhead light. Left and right speaker, the speakers work off the radio in the dash, they're not on the stereo. Okay, all right, that's pretty much the bedroom. Okay, the water heater. Water heater is located right here. Okay, and if you want to set the temperature, I have it currently set at 110. You can adjust that up or down depending upon your like. Okay, okay, I found 110 to be pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. It's warm enough that you can, you know it's warm enough right? right okay so drop in here to the bathroom okay so the water pump turns on the pump right the only time you want to have the pump on is when you're not connected to city water okay okay that is the light the overhead light the vanity light and then that's the fan, right? And it's also controlled there by that switch. 
okay the furnace there's two zones zone two is in the back zone one is up front okay they're both heat pump air conditioners so when the outside temperature is above 40 38 40 you can run the heat pumps if you're plugged in and save propane okay otherwise you change over to the mode you go to furnace oh you got to be on the right zone furnace and that will turn off the heat pump and turn on the propane there's only one zone for propane and which zone is that it's the zone one it's the one that's flashing right there just a wireless remote for the awning right? okay so in and out the door obviously is not connected we've been over the jack system but we'll go over it again put the key and accessory if the red lights are lit that means the jacks are down you will forget when you're going down the road to set it in store and you know, 20 minutes 10 minutes after you start down the road you'll get an alarm jacks down just reach over and hit that store store obviously retracts the jacks and gets you ready to go level um, you can't quite see the light okay remember how I taught you to do the level was first to bring the front up until you feel the weight come on you can hear that in the jack in the hydraulic pump when it starts to load up then stop then do the rear bring it up until you feel the load on the jacks stop and then set your level from there okay, okay. and remember you set the level by watching the yellow lights I'm gonna go ahead and do a complete store here and we'll just re-level here real quick come on, come on. kicked way over that way okay now we'll go back to level we can see here that we got a yellow light and a yellow light I'm gonna bring the front up until I hear it load there we go and I'll bring the back up until it loads You see how the sound of the engine motor changed a little bit? Now, I'll bring this front up. Now, did you feel that? Yeah. That was the length of the height of the jacks. Okay. So that's when it will stop going up as it hit that. Right. And you heard the motor, the right. pitch of the motor change too, right? Right. And now I'm adjusting the side to side by dropping the opposite side that's high. Okay. And in this particular spot, we're, we're nose down a little bit, but it feels pretty level just sitting here. Right. And once you do this a hundred times, you'll, fit, you'll get the real feel for it. Transmission, you probably figured that out, right? right? Pretty straightforward. There is no park, right? Right. You have to set the parking brake uh -huh. before you. Right. Well, you you would keep your foot on the brake, right? The way I would always do it is I would keep my foot on the brake. I'd hit set my parking brake, and then I'd go to neutral. Okay. All right, and then that's basically shut down. Um, up here, the engine brake. Uh, you'll get a sense for that when we drive it on tomorrow but what it does is it's a retarder and you've probably already felt it when you come up to a stop it will retard you through engine brake pressure all right some people call them jake brakes this is not a jake brake this is an exhaust brake okay i generally just leave it on okay okay uh when you're descending a hill and we'll get to we'll head out here and we'll be descending some hills and we'll be doing some driving you know so you're going to get feel for it definitely want it on when you're descending a hill um that right there is your mirror controls okay so 
rotate to the right to control the right in and out up down of course you have to have the ignition on to do that All right rotate it to the left do the left the switch here is a heated mirror okay. i've never had to use it but i guess if you had to kick it on the led lights okay usb this little switch up here turns on your usb port here and there okay okay and also you've probably seen them hanging back here there's a couple of extra cables I had a GoPro that used the old, you know, USB-A. Uh -huh. And then here's just another USB power port. So there's lots of USB power up here. Um, but yeah, so that turns on the USB ports. Okay. All right, over here, uh, of course, we've got the wipers. You probably can figure that out, All right? They're hidden behind that. That's, fortunately, you don't have to use the wipers very often. ICC flash is a courtesy flash for when you pass somebody if you want to flash your lights. Battery boost. That is that relay I think I showed you back in the electrical, which we'll go out and look at here in a minute. That will connect the chassis batteries and the house batteries together. So if your chassis batteries, your starter batteries are down, you can hit that battery boost and start off the house batteries. Pedals. These pedals are adjustable. This switch here is for your camera system. Okay, of course that's your tire system. I think you got that. Overhead fans. There are fans in the overhead. Okay. And you were asking me about defrost. Right. If any time I needed to defrost, I turn on the overhead fans. They blow air down the front of the windshield. Okay. They're adjustable. Okay. Dock lights, those are the lower lights on the outside. Okay. Okay. Fog lights, those are the fog lights in the front. Okay. Air horn, um, that is to turn the air horn on or off. I just usually leave it on. And it works by that. Okay. We don't have any air, so <laughs> it's not going to work, but that's your air horn. Yeah. Okay. Courtesy lights, you can kick them on here, back in, you know, here. And then that's that step cover. On the generator, it's really simple, okay? So if it's cool outside, you want to preheat for about 10 seconds, okay? okay? And anytime you start it, preheat it for some for three to 10 seconds, depending. And what it really does is it's just pumping, it's just priming it. It will cycle for about 15 to 20 seconds, uh -huh. and then it will kick in. So it waits for the voltage to stabilize, the frequency to stabilize before it starts and starts providing power to the coach. Okay, all right. So let me run out. I'm gonna kill the uh, pedestal power for just a minute. Be right back. Okay, so now we're on generator power. So everything being powered in the coach, the heat will run, the ACs will run, all that will run off the generator. Okay. And the way I have it built and set up, as you see currently, we're pulling 18 amps on one phase, which is typical, and 0 .10, 0 0.1 on the other. When the other AC turns on, right. then that one will go up. Okay. All right. Um, that's the way it's wired, so it's balanced out. So you can run both off the generator, all right? The magic number is 35. 35 amps is what you're going to get out of the generator. So when you, you know, you get up around 30 on one leg or another, then you want to watch your load. Okay. Okay. All right. So we'll just let that run for a minute since it hasn't run for a while. Generator and hours meter. That was just a little, you know, right. something I had to put in because I'm a nerd. Slide in and out. I think we know the this guy right here the battery disconnect that disconnects the house batteries uh -huh. from everything right okay all right lp detector is for the propane detector it should always be on if you're occupying the coach roadside lights those are the highlights on 
on the side. On the side. Okay. Okay. Were they on? Because I saw them on last night. Uh, I think they're on because my guess is this switch here, security in this set, also turns on those. Oh. Okay. They're called yeah. they're called scare lights. I have that on. Yeah. Okay. They're called scare lights. So and so if somebody's outside and you want to, you know, run them off. Uh -huh. That's why that switch is there. You okay. kick it on, it kicks on the scare lights. How do you turn these lights on here? This the front set, these. Okay. I'll get there. Give me a second. Okay. okay. Those are spares, so if they're not marked, they're just spares. Okay. okay. Steps retract. Okay. Remember that brings the right. steps in and out with the door. I find it very irritating. If you're parked in a spot like this, right, with the steps out, turn that off. You know, just keep them out. Right. Okay. But as soon as you start the coach, right. it will bring the steps in. Okay. Okay. All right. Curbside lights. Those are those highlights on the curbside. Right. Water pump. That's another switch for the water pump. Okay. okay. And then water heater. That's, that's you got two switches. Right. Okay. Exactly. Uh, block heater and the water heater here. Those are 110 circuits that are out here in the bays, okay. and I'll show you those. Okay. All right. Uh, your inverter. Right now, um, we're sending four amps to the batteries. It's absorbing, blah, 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 right? You really should never have to mess with that. I've got it set up. Then these lights are on this here, okay? And then the map light is this guy. Okay. All right, the map light is this. That one are these. Okay. And also that ceiling fluorescent. Okay. Which is not fluorescent, it's right. LED. LED. I just leave it switched off, but if you want more light, right. turn okay. the switch on. Patio is the outside door light. It also turns on the well light right there. Oh, all right. See it? Yeah. Okay. And this um, one here? That's just a blank. There's well, nothing there. Right. We figured out how to light the, the uh, top of the stove. How would you light the oven? Uh, there's a pilot. It's in there already? You have to light it with a, you know, some kind of a, a match. Where is the pilot? Uh, okay, it's way. Oh, there's it's lit. You look really carefully. Yeah, I see it. Okay, and then let it burn for about 15, 20 seconds before you fire up the stove, right? Because uh, there's a little thermocouple in there. It's a safety uh -huh. device, right? If that thermocouple doesn't get hot, it shuts the gas off. Okay. So, this is the electric, this is one of the electrical bays, okay, this is the inverter that converts the 12 volts to 110. This stuff here is all engine control, but these two boxes here are fuses that control the turn signals, the brake lights, and all that. Okay. Okay? So if for some reason you, you don't have brake lights or something on the back of the coach, check those fuses first. Okay. There's spares right here. All right. Okay? All right. This here is a shunt which measures how much voltage juice is going to and from the battery. Okay, these are the house batteries. That's the 400 amp hour lithium batteries. These are chassis batteries. These batteries are used to start the RV and do chassis related functions, okay? Everything else runs off those house batteries. Transmission oil, engine oil, engine oil add engine oil check your transmission fluid you add there and you check it there you should never probably have to add transmission fluid if you have to add transmission fluid no start looking for a leak okay because okay? it's been rock solid all right this is that chassis battery disconnect right okay so you turn that off it turns off the power to all the ch from the chassis batteries all right coolant uh that's it you know, my safety checks is whenever I was getting ready to leave, I would come out and I would just look things over, look for anything that might be out of place, look for any critter tracks, you know, right. signs of, you know, animals, 
just you know you're just looking around just checking things check the belt it's in good shape uh, but yeah just you're looking for leaks anything out of the ordinary okay all right solar charge controller surge protector all right there are fuses here okay uh -huh. so and they're marked so like this is the trans radio interlock blah 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 okay so they're just fuses there i've never had to do anything with them but i think the steps are there the, the step the fuses for the steps are there uh -huh. but that's what's going on there in this bundle all right so you got your steps I don't know what else is there. Okay. Something. Oh, battery boost switch. CB radio fuses here. Um, LP detector fuses here. Okay. Okay. These are all the relays that do that battery switching I was telling you about. Uh -huh. Okay. So this is the bird relay, and it will automatically switch between the house batteries and the chassis batteries. Uh -huh depending upon the voltage so you're charging your house batteries when you go down the road okay this is automatic transfer switch and what that does is when you're on shore power it detects their shore power and it flips a relay in there to shore power when the shore power goes away and the generator starts right. the relay flips and the generator powers the coach I think the water bay you probably have figured out but go over it anyway the low point drains are like when you're doing service or setting it up for winter okay. and um, it's there's a hose that drip that comes out the bottom in there and when you want to drain to a low point you just turn that on the last one is way back in here it says low point drain that one drains the fresh water tank okay, okay. it's closed currently to fill the freshwater tank, you turn that on. It takes about at least 10 minutes, maybe 15 to fill the tank. And the way to know it's full is there's a slobber tube under here. They call it a slobber tube. And it's on the other side. Water but start coming out. The water starts trickling out of that, you're full. You're full. Okay, now is it filling right now? Is it, it is. It is. Yes. Okay. So my recommendation is you don't need to haul a full tank of water with you okay it just costs you fuel okay okay that's 775 pounds of water that if you're only going you know if you're going from rv park to rv park so take we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna be boondocking okay and how long are you going to be out boondocking next three stops okay then i would go with the full tank okay right and that should get you through three stops. Right. Usually where you dump your tanks, you can get potable water. water. Okay. okay. So here I just put that up before we leave and wait till that slobber tank opens up. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and it takes a good 10 minutes at least. Okay. Sometimes. I can't overfill that. No, you can't. It will, it will slobber out. Okay. okay. Uh, sewage rinse, I think you understand that one. You put the hose on there when you've got this, when you're rinsing the tank out. Uh, basement heater blower fan if you are camping in really cold weather and you're worried about freezing in the basement if you turn that on when the furnace runs that fan starts and it pulls air out of the hot the warm coach and dumps it into the basement okay okay water pump another courtesy switch for the water pump okay they all have to be on to work or just no just them? one it's a okay. it's a three-way okay right all right so any one of them is on it the works. pump will run okay. okay and of course your water pump was right there okay all right black tank valve gray tank valve i think you know that one you got this this is the winterization kit okay. and essentially what it does is when you're when you if you winterize yourself uh you'll set these according to this okay so you close this valve you open that valve stick that in your bucket of juice turn the pump on and it will suction up out of this okay uh when when you're in normal operating mode this valve is closed which is just this valve for this hose and this is open 
question. You said I need to find filters. What filter do I need to find? Uh, look for Flow Pure Ultramatic Ultramate um, on Amazon. That's where I've been getting them. Okay. I'll see if I can find the links and send them to you. Okay. Uh, there's a carbon and a uh, right. fiber filter. Okay. And it does improve the the taste of the water. Okay. Okay. Hot water heater. Since I put it in, I've never had to do anything with the water heater. Okay. Okay. There is a screw right here just holding the door shut. All right. You won't worry about that. But yeah, I've never, you know, it's a, it's set and forget. The control's inside, that's really all you need. Propane is here, remember, no lock. Uh, by DOT regulation, okay. So the fire department can get into it without it being, you know, without having them. Okay, that's the sensor that goes up inside that tells you what, um, Anytime you go and you have the um, tank filled, you have no standing pilots except the oven. Right. Okay? okay. So if everything's turned off, then you have no standing pilots. Another electrical bay. Okay. So, uh, chassis fuses and relays, chassis fuses and relays. Okay. Uh, Cha this is all chassis electrical in here. Okay. All right. So there's no any of the house lights, any anything like that will not be in here. This is all chassis. Okay. Uh, those are where the those cameras are mounted right there. Right. I'm gonna go pop the hood here just a minute. Generator tray release right here. There's two latches right here. Generator coolant, oil fill coolant. Sure. There's coolant in there, the green coolant for right. the generator. Okay. Uses the same oil as the chassis. Okay. Okay. Um, this is raw chassis air. Okay. And it'll be 130 psi. All right. When you're filling tires, right. go on that. Okay. To turn this on, you see this right here? Uh huh. Turn it on this way, that will charge this. Okay. When you're filling something like a inflatable toy or something like that, I put this regulator in because 130 psi, yeah, it'll pop the toy right real quick. And so if you just turn that on, then um, and you can adjust the pressure here, obviously, right? You just pop this up or down and attach your hose there. So it's pretty straightforward. But so that's so that's where you can air up tires, the tires if you need to. All right, but to get air in there, you turn this. You don't have, oh. only turn that one when you're using the regulator. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, that to turn this on, you turn this this valve on right here. Okay. Okay, so it's off now. It's off now. That's where you want to leave it. Okay. Just eliminate any possibility of a leak or something. That's really all there is under here. Of course, the you know washer fluid um, is right there. Okay. So if you found value in this video, give me that thumbs up. I always appreciate that. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, ring the notification bell. I got a ton of videos still to come. I hope you'll enjoy. But for now, it's time to go. Thanks for watching. I sure do appreciate it. Until we get together for another RV how-to video, peace.